We need to take the action to be interested and create space of time and energy. Instead of watching a TV for two hours, how about try listening for two hours? Even if it's hard for you to read, listen. When we apply listening, we're creating new synapses that are new things that can fire and wire that can um take away the the old patterns right it's just you have to shape shift so we get to create what we want internally first you are listening to personal development mastery podcast where you will find inspirational conversations and actionable takeaways to master yourself and improve your life i am your host agi keramidas and my mission is to inspire you to grow stand out and take action towards a purposeful and fulfilling life in this podcast i invite myself inside the minds of successful entrepreneurs authors, spiritual teachers, thought leaders, people who share their journey, milestones and failures for you to be inspired to grow. In each episode, you will find actionable takeaways that you can implement right now, so make sure you follow the podcast to get them as soon as they are released. I remind my regular listeners here that uh, for a short while, the podcast will have one episode a week rather than uh, two. In today's show, I'm delighted to speak with Katie Tsonakas, also known as Kiriaki. Katie, you are a multidisciplinary artist who utilizes her voice to inspire change and transformation in people who want to make an impact in the world. As an actress, you have over two decades of experience in the Hollywood entertainment industry, having worked with many of the major A-list actors. You are also a musician, author, poet, podcast host, an environmental activist and a women's empowerment coach, passionate about inspiring change and transformation. Katie, welcome to the show. I'm delighted to speak with you today. Aggie, thank you so much for having me. I'm so grateful. <laughs> thank you. Yay, it's, let's go. It's great that we both have the, the, the Greek roots, which is uh, we were talking about that just before we started the recording. It's so important. Like the, our roots, is it's everything. Our roots, where we come from. It's such an honor to be cultured, to be Greek, and to know our name and where we come from and how we're connected. It's just, it's very empowering. Absolutely. And uh, even though we do not live in, in, in the country that the, the we are from, there is, I believe, always this, what you said, a, sad, a more deep level of, uh, you know, being Greek in a, in a sense. So whatever that uh, entails. But uh, so my uh, my my yeah, yeah, yes, yeah I have the, a short story. Tell uh, my yeah, yeah, who's going to be 93, September 7th. Okay. She, uh, she and it's who I'm named after. And I go to, I go to Greece. I say, what can I bring you? What can I bring you? Because she has everything. She's seen it all. <laughs> she says, Homa, Homa. When I, when, you know, she, the dirt, the land, yes, I, I literally bring, yeah. I bring her literally dirt in a bottle back because the roots of the land, that's, that's what's so important. And yes. I asked her. Like yes. what's the most important? And she says the the home, the land where you're from, respect the land and the family. That's that from so that's some ancient <laughs> wisdom right there. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Katie, I always like to start these conversations by giving a little bit of background, apart from that very brief intro introduction that I gave of you. So I would like to ask you to share with us in your journey, maybe a key defining moment, some milestone, specifically maybe in terms of personal development. And uh, do you want to take us there and describe that uh, milestone for you? Whatever I comes mean, up. <laughs> yeah, I could go in so many different directions. I, uh, I guess, I guess to my, um, you know, earlier roots of self-development would be um, when I was 14, I wanted to be a motivational speaker and I knew what I knew and I wanted to share that with others. I had everything planned out. I was going to put a local ad in the paper. I was going to have a two-day conference room. 
um, you know, at a, a nearby hotel. I I was going to cater lunch, like the, the details of it. I was going to or wow. have people go out to lunch. And um, then I had it all figured out and as an entrepreneur. And then I stopped myself from myself. I thought it was the imposter syndrome, the perfectionist syndrome. Who's going to listen to a young 14-year-old girl who wasn't of the world? So I took myself around the world. I got myself so much experience in life. And that's how I created, like, She's All Over the Place podcast, one one of the reasons why. But uh, after going, doing that whole experience for two decades while still enriching and inspiring people during the great reset when I had a lot of time just to, for myself to take out and I was growing through this journey and I was really facing things that were holding me back and certain identities that I that people labeled me as or I labeled myself as I put myself as so I was able to look at those reflect and dismantle those things and see that I could have done what I wanted to do. The only one that stopped me was me. I was the only one that stopped myself. And there's no going back. But it's like, what if I would have taken that path? What if I was a a child prodigy? Like, I just, I won't know and I can't, like, sulk in it or anything. But I can just be aware of the imposter syndrome and how I made excuses for myself and then take that and apply that principle to other areas of my life and enrich and inspire others to take a look in and say, hey, how long have you been wanting to do this thing that's ruminating in your head now? Two decades, three decades, four decades, five years, one year, six months. So now I'll check in with myself if I want to release music or if I want to get on a TV show. I'm like, how long have I been wanting to do this? What actionable steps am I actually doing? And what is the projected date for when this is going to happen? Oh my gosh, it's been six months. Oh my God, it's been two and a half years. But it's the thing I said I wanted to do, but it's not happening now. So what can I do to dismantle whatever I need to dismantle? And what energetic things can I pivot and shift to actually apply and hack to make that a reality instead of it just living in my head thank you 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 measured quite a lot in in that and the the imposter syndrome you said uh, i believe many if not everyone can relate to that when you and you you were saying you done all the preparation and everything was ready but uh, the the thought of who's going to listen to me or who am i to speak to these people it is uh, very, very common. And uh, what you were saying also about, you know, realizing, looking back and realizing that it's been uh, a long amount of time when we want to do something and we kind of put it off, postpone it for any reasons. We we have, unfortunately, the, the illusion that we have all the time in the world, whereas we really don't. And uh, it's only... In moments of reflection like this, when you look back, especially when you have written goals and things like that, which really help, you look and say, oh my God, this has been, I've been wanting to do that for such a long time and I haven't. And so what's what's your advice to someone who listening to us right now and saying exactly this, oh my God, I've been thinking of X and I haven't done it yet. Yeah. If someone's complacent and they think they have all this time, we're just in a spiral. We're just in a loop going over and over again. So Dr. Joe Dispenza says we have 60 to 70,000 thoughts per day and 90% of those thoughts are the same thoughts. And we're firing and wiring the same thoughts and the same patterns over and over again. So we're just staying stagnant in an area. However, when we hack and we apply and we change the thought, we shift the energy, we change the pattern we hack it, then we get out of this vicious loop that we don't want to be in. Um, And so that's a way to hack out of it. And it's difficult because we're screaming and crying and yearning for our parents and our partners to understand us, to help us to get out of this quicksand, but it's not for them to do it. They're stuck in their own stuff. Like most people are stuck in their own stuff. And 
even if they want to help you, like it's, it's, we can create some space for people if we can, if we know how to create space for ourselves. But most people don't know how to create space for ourselves, let alone create space for another pe- person. Although other, some people are people pleasers and then they do create space for other people. They do things for other people, but then they don't know how to do it for themselves because they mm-hmm. want someone else to do it for them because we're doing it for other people. The thing that we do to other people, it's because it's what we want most of. Like I give so much love and so much kindness and so much compassion and it's a practice. And it's like, because that in turn, that's all I want for, for me, from, from people to give me an opportunity to hold space for me, to keep my beacon of light shining. So I like to share inspiration and make sure other people's beacon of light are shining. So Mm -hmm. that's a really important thing to do. And it's those micro choices every single day that make up the macro. That's great. And I will repeat that in my own words, what you just said about the micro choices and you said about the loop of thoughts that we are many of us into throughout the day and find a way to hack out of it because that will immediately give us new thoughts, new ideas, new actions, hopefully new new habits, new, uh, new behaviors. Uh, yeah, well, everyone... Up- oh, sorry. One thing is like, Nicole Kidman, J-Lo, Will Smith, like anyone you can think of, on-screen actors, voiceover talent, dances, Olympians, sports athletes. I am I grew up running cross-country because my baba, my dad, he ran cross-country, he turned me on to cross-country running, short-term, medium-term, long-term goals. Like I have coaches for everything that I do. I have consultants and coaches. We need, because we're, we're emotional beings. We're primal mm-hmm. emotional beings. We're going to be up, we're going to be down. We need people if we have a healthy system of it within our family, cool. But we also need people outside of our actual family to, you know, be rooting for us on the sidelines and cheering us and watching us go. So we need to all have coaches, you know, whether it's like if you can financially afford a coach and then if you can't, uh, Caroline Mice, M-Y-S-S, Abraham Hicks, all on YouTube, Paul Check, Dr. Joe Dispenza, Dr. Greg Braden, like Dr. Gabor Mate, like let these people who are the voices who are on YouTube, who have podcasts, be the guiding light to be your best friend to get you to where you want to go. Gary Vaynerchuk, like, I mean, depending on what you're into in life, like I'm really being into mental health, neuroscience, crypto, NFTs, acting, like show up to these things. There's so many things that are free nowadays, you know? So it's like, we need to take the action to be interested and create space of time and energy. Instead of watching a TV for two hours, how about try listening for two hours? Even if it's hard for you to read, listen. When we apply listening, we're creating new synapses that are new things that can fire and wire that can um take away the the old patterns, right? It's just you have to shape shift. It's we have to we get to create what we want internally first absolutely and you mentioned about the having coaches or people that are outside that give you an, a perspective that is more objective because we each no matter how good we are or we think we are in whatever we do we have blind spots and it's impossible by definition to see what the blind spots are so these people uh, the coaches either working with them directly uh, or indirectly by gaining their wisdom through their videos through their uh, online courses whatever it is there is an abundance of knowledge of wisdom of information all that's left to do for someone is exactly what you said to instead of watching two hours of netflix or tv or whatever it is to learn to feed the mind with something that is empowering with something that will make a difference in their life and in the life of the, the people around them And a lot of the people who are seeking out there, who are desperately yearning and wanting to know and soaking up this podcast, a lot of times it's not like a major shift. Sometimes it could just be a subtle shift to the left or to the right. You know, like we're so hard on ourselves. We blame ourselves. We shame ourselves. We blame other people. We judge other people. We judge ourselves. Lean Mm -hmm. in, be curious, be kind, comfort, hug, like that thing that's happening, you know, like it's okay. I missed the mark. It's okay. I'm going to try it again. It's okay. Let's go get some ice cream. Just gentle, gentle. It's And that's why the coaches are there because listen to my voice. Like I do voiceovers. I've auditioned for so many things. I've worked on projects, but my coach, 
is outside of my emotions, outside of me, and has a different perspective that can sh- subtly shift me to the left or to the right a little. It's just that subtle shift to align so it's not forced and so it's more authentic or organic. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. it's that not changing who you are, you know, unless you want to completely, but it's those subtle shifts because we're made up of such greatness in life. It's indeed subtle, uh, very, very subtle and very uh, one one millimeter over time will make a massive difference in the trajectory of, let's say, a vehicle that goes one millimeter to the left uh, over a while. It's going to be a massive uh, change. Yeah. Um, there is, uh, Katie, something that uh, I've I read that you you talk about and you discuss and you, you used to think in terms of uh, short medium and long-term goals. So I would like to ask you to elaborate a bit on this uh, distinction between the the goals and how uh, that uh, way of thinking has affected you maybe compared to someone else that all the goals are equal. Sure. Great question. I find in life a lot of times people burn bridges and they're so short-sighted. And I think it's just one of my gifts Um, It's like the psychology of, you know, our makeup, short-term, medium-term, long-term goals. My dad was a cross-country runner. He turned me on to cross-country running. So what I did as as an individual affected the whole. So in cross-country and sports, you have an individual score based on Mm -hmm. your run, and then you have a team score. So it's like what you do as an individual affects the whole. So I always have this theory of the ripple effect. Right. And so like if I'm smiling and adding a lot of value and you're hearing it, you're going to smile what you're doing. And then the person tuning in could hear it and then pass that on to somebody else. And it's beautiful. But um, if I'm doing the opposite things, which I'm not going to say because there's enough of it in the world, other people are going to do that. Positive breeds positive. Right. Uh, Hurt people hurt people. And I feel uh, healers heal people, right? We can only heal ourselves. But if we have the space and we're open to it, then, you know, we can attune to only heal ourselves. But um, I just took that at a very young age, the sports mentality of cross-country running, short-term, medium-term, long-term goals. And I applied it to my workplace. So it's like I'm in here for a career. Not I remember when I was a teenager, I learned job just over broke. Like, And then there's a career you know, and like you and anyone tuning in, no one's going to know who I am at the gem core of who I am, of my makeup, of what I want, my intentions, my goals. Even if I align to people in so many different ways, we still have multidimensional things that make us different. It's our own unique makeup. And so by staying in tune to self, by listening to my core, to listening to the ancient wisdom in myself, even if my, I say go left and all 99 people are going right, but if I don't follow the herd and I actually have the courage to take action and follow my own lead, it's going to get me to where I intentionally want to go. And in good faith, we're protected, you know, in good faith, we're doing things with intentionality, you know, um, I think it's really important. So I've done that. And when I do that, there's this Mm -hmm. momentum, there's this momentum. And then there's this energy that just magnifies and everyone's like, how do you do it? But when I was disconnected to this voice, to this inner ancient wisdom, to who I am and what I wanted to do, because I was people pleasing and doing everything that everyone else wanted me to do. But I, Wanted to know what everyone else wanted me to do. Jump, how high? Left, for how long? Run, how fast? Because I did things my way and I had that experience. So I wanted to go out into the world and I travel the world. How do you be successful? What is success? And I went on this journey of success to to get to this shiny thing, to get to this thing that I wanted within my heart, soul, and mind, my ego, my vision, blah, blah, blah. So I did it my way. Then I did it other people's way. And then I, then I sat with myself and I'm like, wait a minute. And then it was a long journey to get to myself, to my core, to my voice, because it was so 
um, drained. It was like I, I was, I couldn't hear it because I was so confused because I heard so many other voices. I didn't know which one was mine, and I had to go on this journey, and I was so lost. And I thought, am I ever gonna find it again? And I made myself wait to my to myself again, and I got to my core, and I, I honored myself, and I said, hey. I was brave and strong and I allowed you, I made the choice to let you go, but I'm making the choice never to let you go again. I love you too much. And you're number one. It's the gift of why we're here as individuals. So what we want is number one in a healthy way. You know, it's it's all about self-care, self-love. And if we really self-care and take care of ourselves, then we can really make an impact on this world for each other, for um, our families and, and future generations. That's great. You you spoke about uh, getting in your core, or uh, you you sp- the, you called it the inner ancient wisdom, or that voice which is the the true inner voice among all the other voices uh, that you had. And you mentioned a, a journey, and uh, earlier on you also spoke about dismantling some identities, which I don't know if that is or is not related, but. My question is, in this journey of really discovering your inner truth, the the core or the the ancient wisdom, as you said it, what would you say was one of the biggest catalysts or something that maybe someone else could see at uh, that uh, method or path or person, I don't know what that might be, uh, to direct them? towards uh, that finding or discovering which is the true voice out of all the ones that we have inside our mind i hope my question makes sense yeah no it's a great 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 question it's the core it's the root it's you know it's different for everyone so for me i'm greek so i grew up with socrates and plato and aristotle i Mm -hmm. grew up with greek mythology um i grew up with language and poetry so I would, you know, go on a journey of being alone or feeling lonely and going through this stuff and being lost. So I would write, I would read poetry, I would read literature, I would be around cultured people. So I, anything that makes you feel good, like, and if you go to your circumstances, you're like, I don't want to remember my childhood. I don't want to remember my circumstances, but within what you don't want to remember, what are things that are covered within that you can take off those layers, dismantle those things that aren't you, that you were born into those circumstances. It doesn't make you the identification of who you are. It leads you to what you don't want and what you do want. But getting to the core of what makes us happy, what makes us feel good. So checking in with the body, the intelligence of our body, what makes us feel good. An ice cream, the water, toes in the sand, a coffee, butterflies, nature, a cave, like being in the cold, like like whatever, like what sensorily makes us feel good. And when we start with where we actually want to be, and then we can see where we're going and what we're going to become, right? And it's mm-hmm. a, a daily practice within every hour, within every 10 minutes, within every 15 minutes, however we want to acutely aware, be aware and attune ourselves to the energetic vibration of what we're listening to for how long? Am I talking to a family member for two hours, but actually I just want to talk to him for 15 minutes, but I don't want to hurt their feelings, but I'm not being authentic for with our, my relationship with them. And I'm not being authentic with myself. And that applies to other areas in life. If we're doing it with our own family members, you know, then we're doing it with everyone else. And Mm -hmm. then I'm not giving people my best because I'm not giving myself my best. So a lot of people are are inauthentic of who they are um, because they don't take time to discover who they are. And it's really important to know when you're on this journey and you want to take action, the our husband, our spouse, our family member, we can't let them know like, hey, I talked to you for two hours, but I only want to actually talk to you for 15 minutes moving forward. Because it's going to hurt their feelings. We are, we're around each other and we're going to feel unloved and we're around people to feel love. And they're going to take it personal and they're going to think it's because of them. And then there's going to be a fight. So what needs to happen in, in any situation is if I'm talking to someone for two hours, but I don't want to talk to them for that long, but I love them and I want to talk to them, but I just want to ex- explore and try other things. I need to say, hey, like, 
I got to take a call. I got to go to the bathroom. Like just get out of the situation, pivot the attention somewhere else. So you have that time, right? If you add up the, that time, you could be painting or on, on YouTube, or if you can do this with this person, if they're interested, like if you want to be studying something or reading a book and they're interested, you could do it with this person. Cool. But we mm. cannot not do what we want to do um, sacrificing what we want to do for another human being. Cause we think we have to, like, it's not okay. It's their lives and they're going to survive. And actually it's allowing space for them to be around people who actually want to be with them. You're actually being very selfish by capturing their attention, uh, holding their attention hostage. And you don't really want to be there because they could be around people who actually want to spend time with them. And if you're, if your mind saying, Oh no, they have nobody else. They have nobody else. Well, that's their lives and they can sit with themselves and figure that out and, you know, or, or be around and nature will take its course. And if it's like, oh, well, you know, I can't afford for a nurse to take care of this person or I can't afford it. Like it works out. First, you have to unhook yourself from the responsibility that you have to slave for this person. You know, that's, that's the first step and it's the micro steps. It doesn't have to be so extreme, but it's allowing the process. It's a, it's a acknowledging and knowing that you want to unhook from the principle of this thing you want to unhook from. And, you know, everyone's situation is different and I can break it down. I'm very good at that. So, I mean, I can coach people. I can talk with people. They can listen to my podcast. There are ways to just, it's, it's, a, most people are in acting. It's, storytelling it's life and death it's like very extreme but actually it's just a sh- a subtle shift the quality of the choice to uh, get other people to take on responsibility to help out because a lot of people feel alone that we're doing it all by ourselves or that we have to and we're drowning ourselves out we're disconnecting ourselves because we don't know how to ask for help and we don't know how to be authentic with other people like i said because we don't know how to actually be authentic with ourselves Absolutely. And the word authenticity was coming into my mind while you were uh, speaking. And uh, it is exactly that. And there is maybe a a fine uh, line between being authentic and being tactful or being uh, avoiding uncomfortable situations while being uh, authentic. Um, There is something that I really wanted uh, to ask you about. Uh, because you have worked in the entertainment industry, Hollywood in, in particular. So you have been around people with uh, who in, in most people's eyes, they're you know, idolized, they are stars, uh, they are put on uh, pedestals. So I would like you to share with us some lessons or some traits that you have gained by being in proximity with these uh, people something that can maybe some uh, someone can relate to and understand uh, based on uh, the preface I gave earlier about the pedestals and the, the idols and so on yeah I mean the thing that comes up for me is comparison so I mm-hmm. feel like a lot of people will judge when they see within the first three seconds we judge and then we compare yeah. this person's journey to my journey, this person's journey to this person's journey. And we comparison is a, is a death threat. So like comparison is going to get you nowhere fast. If you want to align and connect with this person and reach out because you admire what they're doing and you see what they're doing, you want to connect with them, cool. And if you have the courage to be a sovereign being and do that. Awesome. And if it doesn't work out, just be okay with that. Like you did your best. But a lot of the times it's just a mere reflection. So if we're seeing something we like and honoring it, like a beautiful flower or like some delicious food and we're like, yum, this is so delicious. This is so good. Or we see human being and we're like, yo, I love your dress. Like your stylist who's styling you, like the choices you've made for your acting career. Like I honor you. This is great. Those are positive things that are going to feed you that, that are going to inspire you. Someone you can like look up to and probably befriend if you're in the same social circles, but to dishonor and to disconnect and to compare and to judge and start, you know, doing tit for tat, it just means you need more love. It means you need more self love. If, you know, if one is comparing themselves to another, if you're feeling bitter inside, a lot of friends I know, they're friends with a lot of people, but they mute them and they just don't follow them because it doesn't make them feel good. A lot of times it makes mm-hmm. you feel like if you're doing nothing, it makes you feel like 
like you're worthless or like you're nothing or you're not doing anything. But the truth of the matter is we can't always be in the yacht and in the boat and flying high. A lot of times we need to hibernate and rest and repair and go, you know, on a sauna and disconnect from social media and disconnect from other humans so we can reconnect with ourselves and mother nature. Mm -hmm. So, you know, each moment has its season. So, you know, in when you're doing glam worlds on red carpets and, you know, I just all year, my first red carpet was uh, this just this week. I haven't been on the red carpet all week. You know, I used to be on red carpets like five times a week on the red carpet all the time. Well, I'm I'm working my tush off right now to get back on a TV show. So that's my focus. And I'm going to have my moment where I'm going to be like on the red carpet nonstop again. So this is a time I can rest and repair where I'm building and working. So there's a moment where you're, when you're baking a cake, you know, the, you have to, sh- you have to work. You have to, you know, say, I want to build, ba- make a cake. You have to go buy the ingredients or make the ingredients or grow the ingredients from a garden. And then you have to, we get to cook those ingredients. And then, you know, then it has to, we're doing it. And then there's a baking process. And then there's the, you know, it has to cool down and then you can deliver it, you know, and everyone can enjoy it. So there's, there's a moment to every aspect. And a lot of times when I was a kid, I remember I was wanting to go from zero to hero. I would go zero all the way to 100, right? I would be going zero and then flying around on private jets around the world. Like I bypass all this other stuff because I wanted to like, you know, not jump through hoops. I wanted just to bypass. But there's it's, there, there's something called the journey of life. And there's a process to everything. And nature takes yeah. its course. And like Khalil Gibran, one of my favorite poets in the world, like on love and on joy and sorrow, on love. Like how can you know the highest of the highest joy, if you haven't experienced the depths of sorrow, like how low does one go and in the, in the, in your darkest day? And then like, how can you say, wow, this is like the brightest rainbow I've ever seen unless you've witnessed some dull rainbows and you, you've mm-hmm. seen some rainbows. So, you know, like I love thunderstorms and it's like, oh, this is a really good one. Cause it's like, it's just a, it, when you hear the raindrops and it's like, thundering and it's like very moody and I, my emotions, I get a little scared sometimes. So it's, it's, it's like that, you know, it's like we move like water, you know, nature takes its course. Not everything is, you know, what we see and perceive that it is. Sometimes you can see someone and you're thinking one thing, but you know, something in their lives, something could have happened with like a lot of things not could have does. We're human beings. Uh, Things happen. We all have stuff going on when there's the compassion and kindness and understanding that everyone has something going on and whatever you have going on, your energy could match that same exact individual. They could feel your lowest of your low. They can know your highest of the high, whether we were unconscious or conscious or realize it or not. We all have it within us. Some of us choose to acknowledge it, know that it's there, and some of us remain unconscious because we don't have the courage to look at it or we don't want to look at it. It's intimidating. But the longer we don't look at certain things, the more it festers and grows from within. So it's about hacking that and befriending it, befriending it, and growing along the journey and nipping nipping it in the bud it, like hacking it and nipping it in the bud when it comes up because we're human, mm-hmm. it's going to happen. It's human mm-hmm. where it's going to mm-hmm. happen. But when it does, how do we respond to it? How do we nourish it? How are we curious with it instead of judging it, dismantling it, disempowering us and self-inflicting what we don't want? Mm-hmm. Yeah, responding to it instead of reacting to whatever it is. Katie, If you were to give to the listener right now, based on everything we've talked about, one uh, actionable item, something they can pick up and implement uh, immediately, what, what would you tell him or her? One thing that people can take action on right away, uh, I would say, you know, in life, the two biggest things, practicing gratitude and practicing patience. And I grew up, you know, as a child seeing Oprah And when I saw this Oprah episode, it was on gratitude. I immediately got a journal and I started writing gratitudes. And when I was a kid, they were very superficial. It was very, but it's very important. Like 
look how many people don't have hair or eyes or beautiful skin. So I would say, I'm grateful for my mom and dad. Some people don't have a mom and dad. I'm grateful for my eyes. I'm grateful for my hair. I'm grateful for my skin. And I was a kid, you know, but, and those things are important. Like I have arms, I have all my limbs. So I think um, practicing gratitude is so, so important. And I went through my journey, practicing gratitude, writing gratitudes, um, teaching my niece and nephew gratitudes. What are three things you're grateful for? I'll go first. So let's make it interactive together, right? You don't have to do it by yourself. You can make it inter mm. and, and then lead by example. So not only, you know, practice gratitude, but Jim Quick says this, when you're learning and you, let's say I'm practicing gratitude, it's awesome. I'm a student. I'm learning. When I'm practicing gratitude or whatever it is and I'm teaching you or another individual and we're doing it together, I'm teaching, but I get to learn twice, right? So practicing more people need to practice way more gratitude multiple times per day. And then I went through the journey of, oh, like practicing patience, which I'm still working on. And, you know, it's like a lifetime practice of practicing patience. But how do we do that? Actionable steps to do that. But then within that, I realized because I grew up as a teenager doing so many gratitudes and thinking I was so in my mind and my spirit of my knowing and my being of knowing gratitude, I realized, oh, and people around closest to me pointed it out. And I'm like, oh, I practice gratitude. I thought I was a master at gratitude, but actually I need to hack and um, call myself out because what I was once doing, I'm like, I've been actually lacking in the gratitude department. Like I'm grateful, but I've been lacking. So I had to call mm. myself out about it. And so I, I'm like, well, when's the last time I actually journaled about gratitude? So then I got myself a new gratitude journal and I started practicing gratitude more because I felt like my cup was overflowing because I've already did it. But then I didn't realize because I was running on old fumes that actually my gratitude is pretty, pretty below the halfway point now. And I need to re-up my gratitude. So like I'm I'm like off to the races running thinking I was good in that department, but I had to check in with myself. So make sure we check in with ourselves, like not five times a year, like, you know, <laughs> once a day, check in with ourselves. How are we doing? How are we feeling? Like check in, how are we feeling? How are we feeling before we can check in with other people and how they're feeling? That's a great, it's a very uh, useful piece of advice, uh, Katie. Thank you. And uh, I'll make a quick comment here. When you were saying about patience that you're still, you know, pra <laughs> uh, practicing yeah. uh, that, uh, you reminded me of there is that phrase that says patient is not, patience is not just the ability to, to wait, it's how you behave while uh, you wait. So it just uh, it just came up as a you know as a, a quote. Um, I have uh, some uh, quick fire questions to to wrap this conversation up, Katie. Before I ask them, where will you direct the listener who wants to find out more about you and uh, discover more about uh, Katie Kiriaki? Sure. Uh, Chinakis com. My last name C H O N A C A S C H O N A C A S dot com. And also, uh, she's all over the place. Podcast. It's streaming everywhere. So we have almost a hundred episodes. So we just wrapped the finale of the Women Empowerment series. And just some final uh, quick fire questions, then, uh, Katie. And the first one, I'm uh, very curious to hear your answer. What does personal development mean to you? Personal development to me is the journey and the experience of life. To understand why we are here is the biggest gift. We go into life and we dismantle our own needs based off of our circumstances and what we've been told and conditioned by society. You're supposed to get a job, get married, have a family, do this, do that. And I went on a journey with myself where I was celibate for seven years and I wanted to travel the world and not be in a partnership. I didn't have a partner for nine years because I wanted to experience what a partnership with myself and why I, why this gift was given to me, because if it's in my cards and God willing, I hope it is before I birth another life into this existence, I wanted to go on a self-development personal journey of why this gift was given to me. So I connected with the universe, with God, um, 
to connect deeply with myself to discover this self-discovery journey. And so I did that. Um, you know, I made that choice to do that. And I feel it doesn't matter if you ha- didn't make that choice because people will be like, oh, I wish I would have did that. We can, we can do it today. We can do it right now. And I can make a choice today to rediscover who I am in a whole new way and go on a self-development journey. It's when we make mm-hmm. the choice to put ourselves first because we come into the world alone and we leave alone. Why are we here? Why? Question. How are we here? Why are we here? What are these experiences? All of that is self-development. And then when we understand it and experience it, we can share it with others. And I feel that's the gift of self-development and why we're here. Know thyself, Socrates. Understanding, Mm -hmm. being so rich from within, and then being able to share it. That's the gift. And uh, a quick hypothetical one, then, if you could go back in time and meet your 18-year-old self, what's one piece of advice you would give her? Oh, great question. Um, Well, if you said 14, I would say just do the conference, right? (laughs) When I was 14, the motivational conference. How about about we went to 14? I would say that. (laughs) But 18, um, oh, this is a good one. I um, I would say you don't have to. I forced myself to do things I thought I had to do that were shyster things. I forced myself as a kid because I was so quick and smart to um, go have experience and do things that I thought I had to do to make it or to get out of certain circumstances. And I was hard on myself and that made me just put more hard, hard, hardness within myself and got me away from my power and created psychological things that I only created for myself, but maybe I was supposed to grow and have those experiences. But I would tell myself, you don't have to do those things. And so I tell anyone listening, anything you don't want to do that you think you have to do, it's just, it's, um, it's hurting our spirit and our soul. It's, it's actually hurting us whether we know it or not, or feel it or not. It's, it's actually, it's, it's hurting us. And it's not going to lead us to where we're wanting to go. It only disempowers us. The thing that we think we have to do, that we don't have to do, we don't have to do it. Thank you. What's one book that you would recommend to the listener based on the topic we had today? Mm. So Khalil Gibran comes up again. Um, Mm -hmm. He has an amazing book. Oh, it's so poetic. It's uh, Broken Wings by Khalil Gibran, his book comes up. Um, oh, oh, there's this amazing one by Bethany Webster. It's a newer book, but it's discovering, um, like it's divine femininity, your spirit, and discovering the the mother womb, the, the inner mm-hmm. mother womb. Um, but I would say that's amazing because I feel a lot of people who are on the medication and a lot of people who are split with their personality and bipolar – it's because this uh, this area wasn't nurtured of the mother womb. Uh, and it's discovering that I found when I read this book and I listened to it on audio, I like listening to audio because I, I read a lot for my work, but um, I can soak it up. But when you're growing through this experience and th- this way that we weren't nurtured, our spirit, our soul in this way, because our, our you know parental figures didn't have that. They didn't know how to nurture themselves in that way. A lot of the issues stem from that very thing where it's like, it's a psychological thing. And I feel a lot of people wouldn't be on medications if they were actually touching upon these very spirited things that are in this book. It, 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 it's just once you know within yourself and you're like, ah, that's Bruce Willis or, ah, that's chocolate cake. And it's like you read a book and you're like, ah, like that's how I'm feeling. Then we stop doing these psychological things where we're being hard on ourselves, hurting ourselves, thinking something's wrong with us. When you're just like, oh, I just needed love and attention and nurture in this way that that, that psychologists and doctors and no one knew how to communicate with me. So I think it's a really important book. 
Katie, I want to thank you very much for this uh, amazing conversation we had. And uh, there was so much uh, wisdom and uh, this incredible energy that you, you shared with, uh, with me today. I want to uh, wish you all the very best in your life, in your career, in your uh, mission. Um, any last parting words from you? Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ. My favorite Greek word is thank you. Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ. I honor, I'm grateful for you. I hope you enjoyed listening and that you got a huge amount of value from today's episode. If you have, please share this episode with someone who you think will benefit from it. If you want to know more about me and what I do, visit my website agikeramidas.com. And until next time, stand out, don't fit in, 